A great question type for math teachers is the graphing question. Let's add one of those. There are a lot of things you can do with this question. I'll begin with just a basic ordered pairs question. So if I want the students to graph these ordered pairs on a coordinate plane, put in the question, set up your um, graph parameters. Since my x values go down to negative 4, I'll go down to negative 5 on my graph paper, and then maybe up to 3. And I'm just setting these slightly bigger and slightly smaller than my largest numbers there. And Okay, so that, that sets up what my answer or my coordinate plane will look like for them to graph one. All right below that is this tools area. So for graphing ordered pairs, I just need the point and move tool. There are a bunch of other tools. There's label, lines, race, segments, vector, circle, parabola, sign, and polygon. So depending on the type of graph you want them to make, you can add tools to this and set a default tool, which I'm going to leave as point. And you graph the answer. So I need to graph all these uh, ordered pairs. Let me do one or two, and then I'll pause it. So negative two, negative one, and then I have negative three, zero, and zero, one. And notice I just put the dots on there, and I'll be back in a second with the answer. All right, I'm back, and I have all those graphs now. So that's the right answer. Below this, I need to tell it how to grade this. So I want to grade this compare by comparing the points because I want them to have every point in the right spot. I even did them a favor by making it a diamond shape so they would sort of know if they got one out of place, they could fix it. And that's how you set up a basic question. So let's just save this. Now you already did this question in the um, practice test that you did earlier, the sample test. But again, the idea is they just have to put these dots in the right spot. And if they get them all in the right spot, then it will mark them correct. So you get the idea with that. Let me hop in and show you um, another question. Another good use for the graphing type question is for graphing linear equations. So suppose I want them, the students to graph y equals 1 half x plus 5. I can give them a coordinate plane. And now this time I added the the tool for the line, because they're graphing a line. And here you can see what I put for my correct answer. And an important option down here, um, I choose to put this one compare by slope. Uh, that seems to do the best job of grading this for you. And then this is how the students will see it. And they can put their dots on the graph and then connect those dots with a line. And you can see that it marked that as correct. And I made it worth one point. You could make it worth as many points as you want. Um, I will admit I have had a little bit of finickiness if you um, grading with the self grading, I've tried this over and over again with the different various options of grade by point or grade by slope. And um, grade by slope seems to work the best, but it might be one when you have some see a student that got it wrong, you might want to give that one a, uh, a look just to, to make sure that it graded it properly. Because sometimes it's marking it wrong when I think I probably would have marked it right. Let me wrap up with just a few final comments about this graphing question. So you'll notice here there's this more option area. Down here there's a lot of options. I'm not going to go through every single one of them. And in fact, I tried to find a resource to just share about this on the Schoology Help section, and they actually don't even have a resource because this is a kind of a newer question, and um, they haven't added it to their own tools yet. But down here, just to hit a f highlight a few things, you can turn on and off the auto scoring here. That might be something you want to think about doing depending on the type of question where you would just have to look at each question and grade it yourself. But, um, you know, the types of questions I gave you today, you can have an auto score. If it marks somebody wrong, you might want to check that to see why they got it wrong. You can also do things like set a minimum score uh, for attempting the problem. Here are some, some uh, layout options. This area here, you, I could see you using if you want to count by twos instead of by ones or count by fives. You can adjust that here. And then also how far, how often you want the uh, tick marks on the graph. And some different things with showing labels and um, whether you want the arrows there or not. Here's some controls. I Originally, the delete is not there. I added delete, which I found that helpful. Um, 
if a student puts a dot on, there's really no way for them to take it off. They can move it around or hit undo, but giving them a delete option might be nice. Here are some annotation tools. You can label your graph, top, bottom, left, and right, and, um, and a title. So that might be something you want to do. This background image, I could see using that. Maybe you want to insert a picture onto the graph paper and then have them you do something with the grid and the coordinates on there. Um, even if it's, you know, find the, figure out where the missing point is in a pentagon where you leave one of the points out or something along those lines. Um, you know, down here, these are just some, um, there's, if they get it wrong, like why it might be wrong. And yeah, I, I'm not sure what all of these are for. I think a lot of these are just for your acknowledgement, instructor details. You can leave your leave a note for yourself. Um, so anyway, they're, they're, like I said, there's a lot down here. They don't have a lot in their manual about this. So um, it'll take some time playing around and figuring that out. But I thought I'd get you started with the basic setup of these questions. And feel free during any time you have left in this workshop to play around with the graphing tool. And if you learn anything cool, let me know.